Foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. You are with Grace at this morning on Thursday at ASEAN Dailies. We deliver news from Southeast Asia. So let's start off um, in Malaysia. Well, uh, there will be lo- uh, road closures in the KL during the weekend, and apparently um, there will be an ASEAN cycling uh, will be happening in. Uh, Kuala Lumpur 2005. So, of course, several roads uh, here will be closed. And uh, City Police Chief Commander Tuk Tanjudin and Isa said Jalan Raja along the Tatara Medarka will be closed from 7 a.m. 7.30 a.m. to all the way till 6 p.m. on Saturday. So especially for Saturday, there will be uh, road closures from 6.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Jalan Raja Lawut, Jalan Sultan Ismail, Jalan P. Ramli, Jalan Ampang, Jalan Dang Wangi, Jalan Tunggu Abdul Rahman, Jalan Raja, Jalan Sultan, Hishamuddin, and National Mosque Roundabout as well. So there will be road signs and also uh, traffic uh, police officers to ease any traffic congestion. But please do avoid or uh, to go to um, using these roads that I've mentioned before because uh, there will be uh, the competition that the whole event will be held on Saturday. And of course, uh, he was speaking during the road uh, launching ceremony of ASEAN Cycle Fest at the city people police headquarters uh, that was just a Tuesday. And about uh, there are 19 contestants are expected to participate in the three cycling races uh, during the event. And that is a being held in the conjunction where the 27th ASEAN Summit will, ch- will be coming up very soon in less than two weeks. So uh, other activities that will be held include cultural performances and exhibitions at the Termodarka. So there will be lots of things to see, but at the same time be aware of this traffic and also congestion and uh, road closures on Saturday. Well, moving on to the next news about the um, there was a strong earthquake that hit eastern indonesia of course there is no tsunami uh, threat yet so um that apparently uh, caused uh, people to flee their homes in panic of course uh, but there was no in, uh, immediate report of injuries or damage yet and also authorities said there was no threat of tsunami as well so this uh, magnitude uh, that measured that was measured 6.3 earthquake was centered 28 kilometers northeast of a low island of chain in East Nusantara province. And also, uh, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, which also put the magnitude at 6.3, they measured the earthquake had a depth of 14 kilometers, or which is nine miles. So this earthquake shook everything for about 11 seconds, causing people to run from their houses in panic. And all, it's also because of the lack of uh, telecommunication network in remote areas were making it very difficult to get the immediate report of the casualties, even damages. So this uh, video... Uh, a meteorology and also a geophysics agency that mentioned that this earthquake did not have any potential to trigger tsunami yet. And when you talk about Indonesia, it is the world's largest archipelago, is uh, very prone to all the uh, seismic uphill uh, due to its uh, location and ge- uh, geographical um, the figures uh, on the Pacific Ring of Fire. And it's actually an arc of volcanoes and the fault lines encircling this Pacific Basin. So 
in order to prevent or uh, prevent all those damages or even casualties uh, it is very important to perhaps improve and also focus more on the telecommunication and also to be able to uh, develop or improve the alarm system around those remote areas yes so that's it for our ASEAN dailies uh, breaking news but we'll be back after this short break to discuss more on the political side of Southeast Asia so stay tuned <laughs> ASEAN Dailies, first and the foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Triana ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing your with grace on ASEAN Dailies, where we deliver news from Southeast Asia. So we are here to uh, discuss and also comment on the political side of Southeast Asia. So first, we'll be talking about the coming up election in Myanmar, and it looks like Aung San Suu Kyi is... Uh, likely to set to win. However, there is always a problem there. So when she, uh, uh, her candidate emerges at the campaign in Radley in southern Myanmar, the whole crowd bursts into cheers and showers her with flowers. And then that shows really confident. It is pretty confident that the opposition will prevail um, this weekend after the decades of struggle against the military rulers, of course. But despite this uh, euphoria around this party as election approach, there are signs that all will not be smooth, even even if the party uh, comes to power. So internal dissent is one problem for NLD, uh, which is deeply divided despite the popularity of uh, this um uh, lady Aung San Suu Kyi and he is uh, Aung San Suu Kyi's pet according to a few of the local chefs and uh, and they um, one of them also said I was one of his top opponents as well so if this party wins majority it will seek the presidency of course and then Suu Kyi herself as barred from the job by the constitution however she has said that she will be the leader of the government and then the question is, can she really transform the whole nation from a military system to democratic uh, country? And perhaps she doesn't really speak up uh, when it comes to certain issues such as Rohingya issues that happened a few weeks ago. And it's still an uh, issue in Myanmar and when it also comes to Southeast Asia. And... Um, that could lead to a lot of dysfunctional leadership and, uh, and the military which has uh, resolved 25% of the seats in the parliament. It's not going away anyways at the same time that will probably cause uh, a, a probably rigid and rough uh, transition uh, in the country. But we hope to see uh, something positive all coming from the Myanmar and uh, also to be able to hear a female leader runs this country with uh, despite all the problems that the nation has. Moving on to the ne next news which is about Vietnam. Apparently Vietnam arrests Malaysian woman for smuggling cocaine and this nation has arrested one woman for uh, smuggling this drug and it is crime punishable by death in a communist country of course and uh uh kahu uh, guru charan sink mat pal who was 44 years old was caught with five kilograms of cocaine at ho chi minh city's international airport uh, which was just uh, two days ago and she had traveled to colombia panama brazil and dubai before landing into vietnam where authorities detected a powder ju uh, drug in her baggage so it was reported of course so on there is some of uh, the world's toughest uh, drug laws anyone found guilty uh, of this possessing more than 600 grams uh, which is 20 ounces of heroin or cocaine can face the death penalty in vietnam and uh, these dozens of foreigners uh, have been sentenced to death for drug offenses but it also has been decades since a foreign national was executed in the country and also drug smuggling and 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 use it is complies as well so 
Not only it is very strict in Vietnam, but it's also pretty strict in some countries in uh, Southeast Asia. So when it comes to drug dealing or any smuggling, any kinds of uh, forms of drugs, it is very uh, strictly uh, restricted uh, at the airport. And it's very, very important to be aware um, that the certain uh, security system is very strict to prevent them from even entering into the country and yes a one malaysian woman was caught and in fact last year the philippine men and also women were sentenced to death for smuggling about 11 pounds of cocaine so no matter how dangerous it is there are still communities a group of people uh, who will just smuggle this kind of drugs into one country and into other and for making a lot of money out of this so there should be certain policies and even uh, even stricter system uh, to be able to prevent and also perhaps arrest more people that's also because of the uh, uh, with all those crime rates are very, uh, rising in certain countries. And uh, let's move on to the next news, which is about ASEAN. Uh, apparently, ASEAN Defense Ministers cancelled final statement over this China disagreement. Um, this minister decided, uh, which was just yesterday, to scrap the joint statement that traditionally uh, ends their annual summit amid sharp uh, divisions over China's aggressive buildup in the South China Sea. And that concerns that the U.S. response could escalate into conflict. And the Malaysian Defense Minister Hisham Mudin Hussein told the news conference that the disagreement between U.S. and China is a real concern for the group, of course, while it may be um, a diplomatic fight between two powers. But this smaller ASEAN nation faced the potential consequences after all, and an estimated about 30% of global trade transits the South China Sea, and the several ASEAN members, including the Philippines, Malaysia, and Vietnam, they have a territorial uh, claims that conflict with China as well. So. Uh, according to uh, the defense minister, our def our considerations are real, not thoughts on the paper. What is signed in the joint declaration is not going to resolve the issues of duplicating claims, nor is it going to which the vessels that are in the South China Sea way uh, unintended accidents can spiral into something worse and he also mentioned in the ASEAN was setting up the hotline as a conduit to defuse this potential crisis as well so lastly dear, between US and China the tension is growing um, more and more and they do not belong to ASEAN but they're invited to participate for sure. And given their influence in the region and also their dispute basically hijacked the meeting agenda. Well, ASEAN Summit is coming very, very soon. And in fact, we, all of uh, the citizens of Southeast Asia nations is are expecting to uh, hear some fundamental uh, the policies as well as when it comes to a lot of uh, trade agreement agreements and also touching on certain issues human right issues and the younger generations gaps and all these are very important to consider and of course South China Sea is one of the major problems when it comes to Southeast Asia well before we end our political news let's go to Taiwan Taiwan's president, Ma Ying-jeou, will meet his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping, in Singapore this coming weekend. And uh, what will be the first meeting between the leaders from the, the two rivals uh, that was since the end of the civil war in 1949? So these two presidents will exchange views on the cross-strait issues uh, and also uh, the, the intention of the visit is to secure the cross-strait peace uh, and it also uh, but no agreement will be signed yet. 
Of course, Chinese statement media early, uh, they mentioned or confirmed that President Xi is to meet uh, Taiwan's leader Ma in Singapore and quoting the Taiwan's affairs official in Beijing. And the one-line dispatch by the official Xinhua, uh, Xinhua sorry, news agency came after Ma's office late Tuesday announced in the first meeting between two leaders. This is a quite a surprise visit and also this uh, a meeting follows the gradual warming of relations uh, with Beijing since the Ma of the China Friendly and also Kuomintang or KMT came to power in 2008. So that's it uh, for uh, the news from political side of Southeast Asia. But stay tuned, we'll come back to deliver more news on the business and economic uh, news from Southeast Asia. <laughs> ASEAN Dailies, first and foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing your with grace at ASEAN Dailies. We deliver news from Southeast Asia. So let's focus more on the business and economic uh, part of this uh, segment. Well, apparently China's appetite for Cambodian rice rises. However, Eurozone still plays a top buyer. Although this demand is rising in China for Cambodian rice, the Eurozone remains the top market for this commodity. And this is according to data released, which was just yesterday. So Mr. Hun Lak, who is the vice president of Cambodia's Rice Federation, said the figures show China is top destination for Cambodian rice in terms of single countries, but it has not surpassed the euro market as a whole. And Song Saran, who is a chairman of the Armbru Rice Cambodia, agreed that China has great potential as a market for rice. And Cambodian rice is acquiring a brand recognition there. And also the Mount China buys supports the entire value chain here, from farmers to millers and exporters. So uh, Mr. Saran mentioned that and um, adding that the Cambodian exporters are facing several competitions for European market as well. So there is a long-term commitment from uh, China to support this Cambodian government. And of course, price is more or less the same as the price in the European market. And and this is according to Mr. Saran. And also, he also added and expressed a uh, pretty confidence that Cambodia will be able to supply about 10, I'm sorry, 100,000 tons uh, to China will buy from the end of this month. So there will be a sort of production uh, surplus there as well, which is pretty uh, quite exciting. And China has a great potential as a market for rice and Cambodian rice is acquiring like a major brand recognition. So of course when, once China uh, really uh, kicks off as a potential uh, buyer, of course it is still is. Uh, and when it comes to uh, <coughs> buying the rice, it is pretty optimistic on the exporter side. and. Um, because of the, the size and the amount of rice that people consume. And of course, that country is a good market for Cambodia rice. And China's population is very huge and it, they consume a rice daily, unlike Europeans. But also at the same time, the Federation is creating a work team to deeply study uh, on this uh, pricing problem so that we can solve it. And China apparently imports about 2 million tons of rice annually and from mainly from Thailand, Vietnam, Myanmar and Pakistan and the most rice exports to China are ordinary just white rice because they can harvest it twice a year but uh, this frag uh, fragrant rice is harvested just uh, once a year so a new agreement for China to import another 100,000 uh, tons of rice, like I mentioned before, from Cambodia begins at the end of this month. So all the best to Cambodia, and definitely that contributes a lot to the economic, uh, the Cambodian economic uh, part as well. Let's move on to the next news, which is about uh, ASEAN economic community. Well, 
when it comes to uh, skilled labor apparently indonesia lacks the skilled construction workers uh, Indonesia construction sector is uh, one of the key factors in boosting economic growth to face as an economic community. Uh, but sadly and of unfortunately, the country does not have enough construction workers who are very skilled. And this, of course, limits this market potential, uh, which is not supported by the sufficient number of skilled construction workers and also uh, according to uh, Toyip, Uyushit Toyip, who is the Director uh, General of Construction at the Ministry of Public Workers and Public Housing, he also said the ministry recorded that Indonesia has 7.2 million construction workers with just about 109,000 certified experts and 387,000 certified workers. Moreover, only about 478 people have license to work overseas in the ASEAN region. So this is the issue that must be addressed immediately. Otherwise, Indonesia nation, the, uh, it will not be able to benefit from integrated AEC. Uh, and perhaps uh, worse comes worse, they can even lose from Singapore and Malaysia. So Indonesia has a lot to catch up. And perhaps they need to focus more on the skilled construction workers this time to face AEC, which will, will be concluded very, very soon. So that's it for the uh, economic side of Southeast Asia, but stay tuned. We still have one more segment to discuss more on social cultural part of Southeast Asia. <laughs> ASEAN Dailies, first and the foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back to 3 and ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. You are with Grace at ASEAN Dailies, where del we deliver news from Southeast Asia. So let's focus on the arts and culture part when it comes to ASEAN. Well, Communication and the Multimedia Minister Saleh Said Quote Rock mentioned that there are over about 400 million people in ASEAN who can speak Malay. So Malay should be ASEAN's lingua franca, says the Malaysian minister. And also noting that there are about 300 people, I'm sorry, 300 million people in Malaysia and in the Indonesia alone whose first language is Malay. Malaysia should, should take this opportunity to promote Malay as one of the main characteristics of ASEAN community. Well, we will uh, really love to hear your feedback on this. And uh, this is, of course, coming from Malaysia. And noting that Malaysia is currently ASEAN chair. And he also added that to form a community, Mal uh, ASEAN should use the homogeneous language, which he is uh, emphasizing on Malay. Even though uh, English uh, still is uh, official language when it comes to uh, conferences, forums, and even meetings. However, he was emphasizing saying we need to show that Malay language is a relevant of a dynamic language that can act as ASEAN language here. So please to le leave your feedback on this. Uh, what's your thoughts uh, about ASEAN language and do we really... Uh, feel the sense of belonging when it comes to uh, having the one ASEAN language here. In Singapore, uh, there is a queue for bald men and also H&M launch that starts three days early. So just before midnight uh, on Tuesday, which was two days ago, uh, nine people, uh, mostly students, were holding already holding their group's place in the queue at the Orchard building. So. Uh, mostly, uh, they are mostly made of students who are just holding their group's place in queue. So first uh, in line was 21-year-old Niu Jin Han, whose friend had started the queue at about 6.30 p.m. on Monday evening. And another in line on Tuesday night was 25-year-old student Pei Wen, who was spending her time just by working on a school assignment. So she told that she was aiming for about uh, $799 dollars 
embellished dress and some t-shirts despite being let down by some of the t-shirt designs and according to h&m app uh, purchases are limited to the maximum of one piece of each item per person to allow everyone to shop the new collection apparently h&m the the brand is growing even uh prominently than before uh, in Southeast Asia, especially Malaysia and Singapore, and that targets a lot of younger generation especially. Well, moving on to the next news, which is about the beauty of this ASEAN biodiversity was captured on a film, which is very, very good news, uh, where ASEAN treasures the trove of the biological riches were the highlights in the film. And um, this is the third ASEAN zooming in on the di- biodiversity photo contest. So Hansa Tamuf Wado of Thailand took the first prize, while Kiao Kiao win the of Myanmar to the second prize, and Vietnam is Hong Fang Nien the third prize. The winner shared the prize money amounting about three thousand US dollars. And with uh, the theme, One ASEAN, One Biodiversity Contest, uh, which was organized by the ASEAN Center for Di- Biodiversity, or ACB, which aims to capture this beauty, richness, and values of the diversity, biodiversity through the vivid pictures of living creatures and their habitats. And this is also a way to promote uh, the ASEAN as a whole community and also to uh, bring the awareness. So when it comes to ASEAN, perhaps the politics and as economies, they are not the ones that majorly uh, influencing the whole ASEAN community. But we also do have other parts which are social, cultural, arts, even the biodiversity, environmental issues. So don't forget to... uh, listen more for our next interview on human rights when it comes to ASEAN and you can look for us on our social media channels Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter and do visit us at rianasean.com our main website but if you on the go and you don't know how to listen to our uh, uh, podcast do download our Durian ASEAN app and listen to us thank you